Welcome to the JTAC Support Case Module. By the end of this module, you should be able to describe the recommended procedures to open a JTAC Support Case. The Juniper Networks Technical Assistance Center, or JTAC Support Flow, is illustrated. You will learn the JTAC recommended procedures and the available Juniper Online tools later. Juniper Networks offer support only to customers with valid maintenance contracts and customers must provide a chassis serial number when opening a support case so that their support status can be verified. Use the Show Chassis Hardware command to get your chassis serial number. Note that you can access the Juniper Network Support website from the Reference Links document. Customers can open support cases using the Juniper Case Management Tool website or over the telephone. Note that you can access the Juniper Case Management Tool website and the contact support page from the reference links document. Note that you should always follow up a Priority 1 case with a phone call to JTAC, even when you open the case using Case Manager. When you open a case, provide documentation of the problem or symptom by capturing the output of relevant CLI commands. You might also consider capturing the output of a request support information command. This command is actually a macro that executes many diagnostic operational mode commands. While the output is lengthy, adding this information might prevent the need to follow up with additional command output once your case is being analyzed. You can find case management details and procedures at the Guidelines and Policies website. Note that you can access the Guidelines and Policies website from the Reference Links document. The Guidelines and Policies document defines case priority levels, escalation management, support levels, return material authorization or RMA handling, warranty information, and gray market inspection procedures. When you contact JTAC, a member of the support staff will work with you in assigning mutually agreeable priority levels to your problem that will be reflected in the support case opened on your behalf. There are four priority levels. Priority 1 is critical and indicates catastrophic impact to business operations. Examples of Priority 1 issues include network or system outages that cause customers to experience a total loss of service. Priority 2 is high and indicates significant impact to business operations. Examples of Priority 2 issues include network or system events that cause intermittent impact to end customers. Priority 3 is medium and indicates limited impact on business operations. Examples of Priority 3 issues include network events that result in only limited impact to end customers. Priority 4 is low and indicates no impact on business operations. Examples of Priority 4 issues include information requests. Juniper Networks offers systematic escalation management to customers with current service agreements. This escalation management ensures that the appropriate resources within Juniper Networks are used to resolve outstanding technical problems as efficiently as possible. If you feel the problem is not being given the appropriate level of attention, you also have the option to manually escalate your case using the Escalate This Case link on the Case Manager website. You will be prompted to a list of reason for the manual escalation. Note that for more details on how to perform manual escalations, you can refer to Juniper Knowledge Base article KB17701. If the case is urgent, it is strongly recommended that you call JTAC where you will be able to speak to an escalation manager. You must have a valid support login to access Juniper Network support services over the web. Note that you can access the website from the reference links document. Point your browser to the support website, which provides an account menu that links to the account login page. Note that you can click links to request an account or to manage the passwords associated with your existing support account. Accessing the Juniper Network Support Services requires a valid maintenance contract. Customers and partners can verify warranty and Juniper Care Service Level entitlement for their products by using the Juniper Network Serial Number Entitlement or SNE tool. Note that you can access the Juniper Network's SNE tool website from the reference links document. To access the tool directly, 
Go to Serial Number Entitlement Tool. A support login is required. Select the criteria you wish to search by serial number or numbers, software support reference number or numbers, or contract ID or IDs. Select filters to determine the data according to your preferences. This is optional. Note that for more details on how to find the serial number and software support reference number, you can refer to Juniper Knowledge Base article KB11364. You can use the Juniper Case Manager portal for managing your cases and RMAs. Note that you can access the Juniper Case Manager portal from the Reference Links document. Before opening a JTAC case, you should have this information available. Serial Number Description of the problem in detail Priority level and impact of the problem Software version Appropriate configuration and log or debug data or both Current network topology, which is not required but highly recommended for speeding up the troubleshooting process for P1, P2 service requests and the remote access for Juniper Network's engineers to log into the hardware if required. Refer to the following procedure for reporting a problem through Juniper Case Manager. 1. Log into the password-protected Juniper Case Manager by entering your login ID and password. 2. Select Create Case and fill in the appropriate fields. 3. When you are finished, select Save and a case ID number will be provided. 4. A Technical Support Engineer, or TSE, will contact you as per the JTAC response and communication guidelines. In the event of a hardware failure, contact Juniper Networks to get an RMA number. If a customer has purchased a hardware replacement support plan, then Juniper Networks will provide replacement part or parts to the customer under the Hardware Replacement Support Plan. To request an RMA, create a case by using the Juniper Case Manager and select the case type, Technical Service Request. You can also request an RMA by contacting your local JTAC on phone. When requesting an RMA, provide the following information. Product model number for the defective hardware. Product serial number for the defective hardware. System serial number of the base unit. Description of failure and troubleshooting performed to isolate the cause. Customer ship to address. Contact name. And contact phone, fax, and email. Welcome to the Juniper Products Online Tools module. By the end of this module, you should be able to access Juniper Online Tools to manage Juniper products. The Knowledge Base, or KB, located at the Juniper Knowledge Base website provides a key support tool for researching issues or technical questions. Note that you can access the Juniper Knowledge Base website from the Reference Links document. This is an example of a KB search using the keywords IPsec VPN down. The results are displayed here. What is the Knowledge Base, or KB? The content of the KB includes not only the Juniper documentation, but also custom-made articles, such as configuration and troubleshooting guides, as well as technology white papers. It is a very useful tool when troubleshooting a problem or when trying out new complex features. The white papers and technology notes usually include full scenarios with step-by-step -step configuration guides. You can search the KB using the KB number, keywords, or natural language queries. Finding the right query can take a few attempts. If too many results are found, it is very easy to restrict the results set based on the platform or the type of information requested. For troubleshooting, KB articles, specifically solution guides, are very useful. When trying new features, both white papers and configuration examples from the documentation guide can save you a lot of time. Each KB article has an ID number that can be used to refer to it. A problem report, or PR, is the description of an issue, typically a software issue, that must be addressed by the Juniper engineering team. The life cycle of a PR is part of the Juniper software and hardware development and quality assurance processes. Note that you can access the PR Search Web interface from the Reference Links document. The steps displayed are the major steps of the full PR lifecycle.
The structure of a PR includes main fields, such as number, title, release note, severity, trigger, workaround, status, and resolved in. Among the fields that compose a PR, of particular interest are trigger and workaround. Together, they can help you decide the best way to minimize the impact of a software issue until the network can be upgraded to a release that is not affected. In addition to these fields, a PR can also contain several additional fields. The complete list is available on the Help page of the PR Search Web Interface. Note that you can access the Help page of the PR Search Web Interface from the Reference Links document. PRs are accessible and searchable using Juniper's web interface, using either the PR number or using keywords. Website access requires a valid login. The list of open PRs affecting a given Junos release is added automatically to the version's release notes, which are constantly updated as new problems are discovered and known problems are fixed. It is best practice before a software rollout to carefully examine the Open Issues section in the release notes. You might avoid known problems or reduce their impact before they affect you. Keep the following tips in mind when performing a PR search. Be specific at first. Getting too many results would mean having to go through all of them, trying to understand if any of them might describe your problem. If you do not get adequate results, you can easily remove keywords to expand your search. Use log entries related to the failure. The PR index includes related log entries. Do not cut and paste from log files into the search form. Remove host names and numerical values that might be specific to your router. Search for an exact phrase by using quotes. Use the plus and minus operators to force inclusion or exclusion of keywords. The minus or exclusion operator is the most useful because it enables you to remove unwanted entries easily. Use Juniper Network's tech library to find all information and documentation you need to evaluate, configure, or monitor Juniper Network's product. You can browse product documentation based on product category or a specific product. Note that you can access the Juniper Network's tech library website from the reference links document. Clicking the Tools and Applications tab on the Tech Library webpage provides access to many helpful support tools, including CLI Explorer. This tool is used to explore configuration statements and commands. Feature Explorer. This tool helps in exploring software feature information to find the right software release and product for the network. Hardware Compatibility Tool. This tool helps to find the transceivers, line cards, and interface modules that are supported on Juniper Network's products. System Log Explorer. This tool helps to search for and determine information about various system log messages. Network Product Selector. This tool helps to find the Juniper product based on product selector questions. Juniper Digital Assistant, or JDA, is the 24-7 tool that provides convenient, real-time issue resolution, anytime, anywhere. Access the JDA using the Juniper Network Support Services over the web. Note that you can access the website from the reference links document. Look for the chat button on the bottom right of the page, JDA. Assist in software download access request. Checks product details. Provides status of RMA or support case connects with a customer care agent live 24-7, and guides product exploration. The Juniper Elevate community, forums, and blogs is located at the Juniper Elevate community website. Note that you can access the Juniper Elevate community website from the reference links document. This is a community of network professionals who discuss issues, ideas, and tips. Juniper Elevate is also home to popular technical blogs that detail the latest Juniper technology. Technical bulletins, or TSB, provide notifications on software and hardware updates, new software releases, end-of-life or EOL announcements, and support news. Visit the Juniper Knowledge Base and select the category Technical Bulletins to find the latest Juniper technical updates. Juniper's Knowledge Base subscription feature enables you to receive an email summary about new and updated articles for the technical bulletins. 
For an overview of how to subscribe, change, and unsubscribe, refer to the subscription How-To page of the Juniper Knowledge Base. Note that you can access the Juniper Knowledge Base and the subscription How-To page from the Reference Links document. The Juniper Network Security Incident Response Team, or Juniper SIRT, constrains the publication of Juniper Security Advisories and Security Notices for non-urgent issues to a predefined quarterly schedule of the second Wednesday of January, April, July, and October covering all Juniper products. In exceptional circumstances, the Juniper SIRT may publish an out-of-cycle security advisory or security notice, but that is a rare event. Examples include, but are not limited to, active malicious exploitation of a zero-day Juniper vulnerability, or perhaps a multi-vendor issue in which all participating parties must publish simultaneously on a schedule negotiated by an external coordinating agency. Visit the Juniper Knowledge Base and select the category as Security Advisories to find the latest updates. Juniper's Knowledge Base subscription feature enables you to receive an email summary about new and updated articles for the Security Advisories. For an overview of how to subscribe, change, and unsubscribe, refer to the subscription how-to page. Note that you can access the subscription how-to page from the reference links document. Welcome to the JTAC Files Transfer Module. By the end of this module, you should be able to use FTP to transfer large files to JTAC. You may need to transfer a large file to JTAC, such as a core dump file. You should always submit core files to JTAC for fault analysis. A file larger than 10 gigabytes cannot be attached to a case in the Case Manager portal. Note that you can access the Case Manager portal and the Juniper Knowledge Base from the Reference Links document. The recommended procedure for transferring core files to JTAC are outlined. 1. First open a service request and obtain a case number. 2. Escape to a root shell and change to the directory containing the core file. 3. Optionally rename or copy the file using a name in the form of case number, core sequence number. 4. Although not strictly necessary, it is recommended that you chmod the core file with 444 to ensure that all users, root, owner, and other, have read permissions for the file. 5. In some cases, the core file is already compressed, as indicated by the file having a .tgz or .gz file extension. If the file is not already compressed, you should compress the file to reduce transfer and storage requirements. This is especially important when dealing with the VMCore.0 file associated with a kernel crash because this memory image file can be quite large. 6. Log in to the Juniper Network's anonymous SFTP site at sftp.juniper.net and change into the slash pub slash incoming directory. 7. Ensure that your FTP client is set for a binary transfer. In many cases, the client defaults to the correct transfer type. Issue a type command to confirm the current transfer setting and use the image or binary command to enable binary transfer mode as needed. 8. Upload the compressed and renamed core or memory image file using the put or mput command. The procedure for uploading a large file to JTAC directly from a Junos device is displayed.